Hi all, I'd like to show you another crushing miniature from Gary Kasparov and another victim from the British scene, British Grandmaster Jonathan Spillman. So him, Nigel Short, Adams, he's been among one of the UK's top Grandmasters. So let's see what happened in this game. This was played in the World Cup, Barcelona and Spain in 1989. Kasparov kicked off with D4. And Spillman is known for very interesting openings. He played actually d6, so we're going to get a Pierce defense, perk defense. So g6. Now Sparov plays actually the move c4 here, not going uh, along normal e4 lines for the perk, uh, but actually transposing it potentially into a king's engine defense. But Black now, instead of playing bishop g7, plays e5, and Sparov just plays knight f3 here letting black take on d4. Uh, one potential problem now after e takes, knight takes d4 is that white's grip on the d5 square is quite good. There's frontal pressure, this looks good for d5 control. On the other hand, black now exerts quick pressure on d4, bishop g7, and now we see the move knight c6, positively inviting white to double the pawns, but this might not be such a big problem for black, it would sort out the d5 square. No, instead Kasparov just plays bishop e3 and now Spillman plays knight g e7 hoping perhaps for a quiet life here if bishop e2 we have a kind of Moroxy bind type position. Alas Kasparov went for him, he played actually the move h4 so there'll be a welcoming, welcoming committee for the king if black castles here with h5, maybe queen d2 and bishop h6 later. Black now played h6 to try and do something about h5, to play for example g5 in response to h5. We have now bishop e2 and now Jonathan Spillman plays a very aggressive looking move, f5. So he's making use of the fact that white can't actually easily control this diagonal at the moment, it's blocked by that pawn. So f5 seems like a good move to try and influence the center here. Now e takes f5 was played by Kasparov. After knight takes f5, knight takes f5, bishop takes f5. Visually, it looks as though black has a fairly pleasant position here. Black is immediately also potentially threatening to double the pawns and maybe queen f6. That would remove the possibility of knight d5. Uh, this bishop looks down here, so they look to be coordinated. We see queen d2 now. This move protects against bishop c3. It also means that if castling kingside, there's bishop takes h6. So what is going on here? Queen d7 now, as though black might decide to castle queenside. Now, does white want to try and castle queenside here? So both players. Uh, seem to have some sort of flexibility, but for the moment h6 seems a problem for black to castle kingside. This pawn though seems a problem if white's going to castle kingside, surely this pawn is a bit of a liability. However, Kasparov did castle kingside even with this odd looking h pawn on h4, abandoning any hopes of opening up the h file, and black's king seems now snug with castling queenside. Or is it? This snugness maybe is challenged, even though White's got a silly looking pawn on h4. Kasparov lashes out now. Can you guess what move is the introduction to potentially dangerous attack? If I give you five seconds here. Okay, b4. Try not to rip open the lines. Now, if it's ignored, then b5. This lodges the knight from central control and white has a pleasant enough position and his attack carries on, maybe with things like knight d5 and queen a5 later. Black actually took this and it seems extremely risky, but note black controls the b1 square here, so it's not easy just to use the b file like that. We see actually the move knight b5 here and it's hitting a7 and b4. In fact, in post-game research here, there seems to be a move, at least with the computer analysts are concerned, that technically, you know, if this was a correspondence game, technically black might not be having 
such a bad position here, even though it looks extremely dangerous. Uh, because note as well, you know, Black's looking at this rook. Black's seem to have threats like knight c2. But there's there's a move here which may have slowed down white significantly and solved some of the problems, which was actually a5. And it's actually a difficult knot to crack. You can see quite detailed analysis of the PGN if you would like. Uh, it's in the description of this video. But in the game, Jonathan Spillman played knight c2. And it seems initially, well, knight c2 has got quite a few things going on for it. It's hitting the rook on a1. Uh, this this bishop might be useful for b1 later, and he might have just expected a natural move like rook b1 or knight, or knight takes. These are all very interesting possibilities, but um, Kasparov avoids them, and it seems actually Kasparov played one of the absolute best moves in the position available. Uh, so it's very, very tempting to play knight takes a7 or rook b1, uh, but he plays something entirely different. What does white play here if I give you five seconds to pause the video here. Okay, just bishop f3, just casually saying to black, you know, take my rook on a1. We have though this glare of the two bishops. This glare is very, very dangerous for the black king. Also added to that is queen a5 on the cards as well as knight takes a7. Now black dare not take the rook here. If he took the rook, then, for example, knight takes a7 and queen a5 is very strong. Just with a simple idea of knight b5, the bishops, the knight and the queen are actually slaughtering, it seems, the black king here. For example, like c6, knight b5, it's all over, something like this, end of game. So this is a very, very dangerous idea, uh, bishop f3. So knight takes a1 seems to fail. Uh, just with knight takes, and then this is just an incredibly dangerous position. So Spielman actually tried in this position. It might be too late to defend the position technically. Um, after bishop f3, he actually tried to close up this diagonal at least with d5, closing up this particular diagonal. But does it help now? Kasparov played bishop takes d5, keeping all the previous ideas intact and now the the rook is taken and we see a very simple looking knight takes a7 check king v8 now obviously white's just lost this rook it's a rook sack queen b4 just threatening mate though but there's gigantic king pressure here just with the two bishops and the knight and the queen funny enough it is four pieces and not too many defensive uh, pieces for black but you know, Sproff has played all this with a rook sacrifice in this pawn on h4. So in a way, it's got some strange elements uh, here. But now, you know, Black is in a desperate position. He actually sacrifices his queen. He has won a rook here. So can he get some material together to compensate and to neutralize White's attack? C takes d5, uh, threatens things like knight c6 potentially. Knight c2 hitting the queen though. Queen a5 protecting d5 now. Knight takes e3. F takes e3. Has black got enough here? Well, unfortunately, I mean, it seems so basic and crude, but it does seem to work that it seems that, say, b6, white would just play something like queen a6 here. And if bishop c8, knight c6 is mating, just the queen and knight are lethal here. On the event of b6, it would seem. Uh, black played rook h8, and then we have knight b5. Just again, very simple coordination of queen and knight uh, seems very dangerous. Uh, so black is in a bad way here. If he tries to defend c7 like this, then this kind of embarrassing mate could occur. Uh, so it's looking very difficult. Black played rook takes d5. And now Kasparov takes on c7 first, and then comes back for this check. And here, this is absolutely crushing. Black actually resigned here. If Don and Spillman had carried on, say with king b8, then check queen a8 is probably the strongest to get the king here for queen takes b7 check. 
And here, uh, if king moves to d8, then queen takes d5. If king moves here, then knight c7 is pretty nasty and and winning on material if nothing else. So yeah, it, it looked like a, in, in some ways, it looked like a simple game, this kind of miniature. But uh, it was incredible, actually, the accuracy for that bishop f3 earlier. Um, yeah, other variations might have offered black some salvation. It's just the way Kasparov plays his attacking games. He makes it look uh, incredibly easy, but uh, behind the scenes, as you, as you might want to check from the PGN of the video, uh, there's lots and lots of variations to navigate. But uh, yeah, he's casually sacrificed this rook on a1 to get a fantastic coordinated attack with the bishop pair and the queen and knight. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that one. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.